Hello everyone, my name is Scott Switzer. I'm an electrical engineering student at the University of British Columbia, and welcome to my TEDx talk on artificial intelligence and the environment. Our generation is constantly told that we are the ones that will have to pick up the pieces from climate change and environmental destruction. That hope for the future rests in our hands. Talk about a bummer. All right, so we've got a plan to save. How do you go about doing that? Obviously, that is an issue so large and so complex that there really is no easy answer. But today, I'd like to present one of the many places that maybe we can start. And that is breaking past the limitations of traditional problem solving through innovation and show that by leveraging new technologies in creative ways, specifically artificial intelligence, we can find solutions to environmental issues. So in this talk, I will cover several unique case studies showcasing how AI is being used in two of the most vital ecosystems on our planet, the rainforests and the coral reefs. So first off, taking a big step back, what is AI and why should you know about it? So artificial intelligence at its most fundamental level is a program that can sense, reason, act, and adapt. Now this definition covers a huge array of uh, uh, applications um, anything from the world-conquering robots that you've seen on movies and TV to more down-to-earth examples like recommendation algorithms used by companies like Netflix. For the examples we'll cover today, they're a bit more specific, so it is artificial intelligence powered by what's called machine learning, which is a program that actually improves over, over time as it's exposed to more data. So in a traditional coding program, the execution is static and unchanging. It takes in well-defined inputs and follows a set set of steps to achieve any particular solution. In contrast to this, AI is robust and adaptable. It has a dynamic ability to take in new inputs, new data, and actually learn and develop from it. And that is why it is such an exciting tool for problem solving. And it's also the reason why today AI has been applied to just about any field you can think of anything from drug development to art generation. And we could have entire talks dedicated to just about any of those fields, but today we'll focus on perhaps the most important, our environment. So first off, we have AI and rainforests. It would be difficult to understate the importance of rainforests. They cover about 80% of Earth and are a huge carbon sink, often referred to as the lungs of planet Earth. On top of that, they also house a staggering amount of biodiversity housing about 80% of the world's terrestrial species, all the while providing livelihoods for over 1.6 billion people. Uh, despite this, um, like many ecosystems today, rainforests face many challenge, challenges, not the least of which is illegal poaching and uh, rampant deforestation caused by illegal logging and climate change. So how is AI being used to tackle this? First off, we have tracking animal species. So tracking animals is absolutely essential to understanding the biodiversity and health of biodiversity within the rainforest. It also helps us identify which animals might be endangered, which animals might not be endangered. And using this, we can inform the policy decisions that directly benefit the rainforest. In the past, though, this type of research has been a bit difficult. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of manpower, and it takes a lot of resources. So that's where AI stepped in to help. What researchers have done is set up cameras throughout the rainforest and tasked an artificial intelligence program with identifying whether or not an animal was in the video frame and identifying the species of that animal. They found that they could be 85% accurate, which amazingly is the same accuracy that a human would have if analyzing video footage. So tasked this th with this, we can get a lot more data and a lot more effective data, data that goes directly towards conservation. Our next, next example is predicting the effects of climate change. So IBM's InfoSphere stream is powered by artificial intelligence and has been used to measure carbon levels, soil moisture, humidity, and atmospheric pressure of rainforests, all of which can be used to predict when there will be droughts and wildfires. So hopefully through this technology, we can mitigate these catastrophes from happening by predicting them. Our last example is stopping illegal poaching and, and logging um, through what's called acoustic monitoring. So researchers set up recycled cell phones throughout the rainforest to pick up audio data 
and identify whether that audio was naturally occurring or unnaturally occurring. For example, it could identify the buzzing of a chainsaw or human conversation. And geared with this, the ranger's task with protecting the rainforest can respond a lot more quickly and a lot more effectively. Altogether, these three examples represent great strides forward in our ability to protect the rainforest and all would be impossible without AI. Next, we have AI and coral reefs. So reefs are important for much of the same reasons as our rainforests and are indeed even often called the rainforests of the sea simply for their staggering amount of biodiversity, exemplified by the fact that while covering only 1% of the seafloor, they house about 25% of all marine life. Tragically, it's estimated that in the last 70 years, we've lost about half of all of our coral reefs, which just goes to show how important it is that we find effective solutions to protecting this very vulnerable ecosystem. A traditional reef life survey aims to once again monitor the biodiversity of that ecosystem. So what researchers have done in the past is scuba dive with a physical notepad and manually identify every fish that they see, the species of fish that they see, and the lengths of the fish that they see. While this is pretty cool, scuba diving is a lot of fun, it's also prone to a lot of human error, not the least of which because researchers have to estimate just by sight how long the fishes are, and also remember which fish they've already identified. So that is where the research I did this past summer came in to try and improve the process. So working at the University of California in San Diego, we developed what we called a fish sense. So it was a depth camera paired with a processor, and instead of scuba diving with a physical notepad, researchers would now scuba dive with our fish sense and instead of manually identifying every single fish they run into, all they have to do is point our camera at the fish or school of fish, and using, you guessed it, artificial intelligence, they could, I, the, an artificial intelligence algorithm would identify number of fish in the frame and the lengths of the fish in the frame. So this project is still in development at UCSD, but it holds a lot of promise for greatly improving the type of research that they're doing and improving the data that researchers can get from these coral reefs. So in conclusion, if there's one thing I can leave you here with today, it's that no matter where your life takes you, no matter what your experience is, I hope you can always look for ways to leverage your particular experience in creative ways to better our environment and hopefully break free of the traditional limitations. Thank you so much for allowing me to share how a field I'm deeply passionate about has been used to do just that. Thank you.